Hey guys, welcome back to Cohen Chronicles Paying It Forward. Today we're here with Team Schuster, led by John Schuster, uh, 2018 gold medalist, five time champion. So, you guys, how are you feeling about uh, this national season? So far, so good. Obviously, a little different setting, but it's a great time. So we always love doing something different, and the ice is great. It's just fun to be out here curling. So, uh, how'd you end up calling and how old are you guys? How uh, old were you? Uh, well, I am 36 now, but I started when I was like 11. Um, so yeah, I've got a good 25 years going now. Yeah, it goes by quick. Yeah, I started curling. I threw my first rock section when I was 12. Um, my dad curled so I knew what it was and uh, I'd go watch him in the league and that kind of thing. And uh, finally, when I was 12 years old, I decided to give it a try and kind of fell in love kind of instantly. I was, uh, I basically, like curling in Fairbanks, Alaska is where I'm from. The curling club was like my daycare. So I don't, I literally don't remember not curling. Like I went out there as soon as I could. You'd think I'd be better than I am, but you know, I do my best. So why, uh, how did you know that you guys work well as a team? Uh, I mean, curling teams are one of those things where, um, you know, if, if everybody on the team is kind of playing for each other, uh, you know, obviously there's a skill set that, you know, everybody brings to the table. So um, for us, we always try to help each other have like the best games we've ever had. And that's, you know, that's kind of how we approach it is, is playing the game and helping each other make, you know, every shot as best as we can. Yeah. So what do you think it takes as a team to get where you are today? Um, I think it just takes four or five guys that are all had the same goal in mind and that are all just pulling in the same direction and, and putting in putting in the work it's um, like our team isn't all they, we don't all live in the same city so there's a lot of trust that goes into just knowing that when we're not together the guys are are doing you know the comp, like all the work on the, like in the conversations that we have and um, you know the, the the game is taking a lot more than it's ever taken. You have to be in the gym, you have to be at the curling club, you have to be um, working mentally um, to make sure that when you get to these kind of moments, you're totally ready to go. How do you balance your full-time job with the <laughs> Pretty easy for me, my full-time job is, uh, is a stay-at-home dad, but I think these guys are better at asking that. It's, it is not easy. Uh, one thing, that I've really prioritized the last handful of years is being able to have a gig I can work remote. So I can work here. Me and Lance Stein are both like are often working in between games. Chris owns his own business, so he is as well, but it's a little different schedule. Like Lance Steiner and I both kind of work nine to fives. Um, it's difficult, mainly because of what it takes to be a competitive curler now. Like Chris said, it asks more and more and more of you. And we're as like competitive athletes, people who have that type of personality that want to win, I also don't want to like let my work teammates down. You know what I mean? So it's it's a lot. It's it's tough balancing it, but it's one of those things that we love to do this. And we, all of us, everyone who you see out here curling, they have a work family that also really supports it. It'd be hard to do otherwise. Yeah. So what's the most important skill to get by in the position that you guys play? I think what you said there is the most important thing. It's own your position understand that like every position kind of has a role as a team it, it may differ from team to team what every role does but then go out there and perform your job to the best of your ability if things aren't going quite right i had a coach that would always say if things are starting to kind of fall apart and get a little sketchy like don't try to do more don't try to fill i shouldn't try to fill chris's shoes or john's shoes we should all just try to do less better essentially so just narrow down to your role so when things are tough, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing and you dedicate yourself to that. That's that's my advice. So what is your mindset if your team is down to points and how do you stay focused and positive? You know, for us, when we're on the ice, um, you know, the scoreboard is just another tool as to like how we're going to, you know, approach each end. And so really just seeing the scoreboard and knowing where you're at on it and kind of having that help guide, you know, the strategy decisions that you make and, you know, the amount of aggressiveness that you play. So, um, you know, and get behind in the game, you just have to trust that 
you can make some really good decisions and if you get a break you can be right back in it and uh and yeah it, it really just boils down to you know seeing what the situation is and trying to you know best manage that that's it for sure how do you prepare for the big shots it is I mean, we all talk about it. What we have before every tournament, before every game, we go through something like process goals, essentially. And a common theme amongst our team, and I think every team that does that sort of practice, is pre-shot routine. So you kind of have a routine, and you stick to it. So if if that means touching your leg every time right before you shoot, or or whatever, breathing, making sure you take a deep breath in, exhale halfway, and then push out, like be consistent because that routine especially in a game where you're trying to be you're trying to replicate everything over and over and over and be consistent like that helps a lot and it's something you can always fall back and kind of focus on if you watch like one of the most exaggerated that I know of is like Mike McEwen or Brendan Botcher they both if you watch them they do the same thing over and over and there's a weird little tick like maybe they'll touch their knee or touch their forehead or something but they go through that same thing every time how do you talk as a team after wins and losses? Yeah, I mean, it's, we try to keep it consistent. Like when we win, um, it's what did we do well, but you still want to find some things that maybe weren't, weren't perfect during the game so that you can work on that and going to the next game. And when things don't go well, it's not getting overly negative and it's not um, dissecting it too much. It's just what are the small adjustments that we can make and and then just asking your teammates, like, if you need help with something, be open about it and just say, hey, like, what are you seeing? Or, you know, try and get some feedback from guys that are watching it live as well, because all of us are each other's biggest fans when we're out there, because, you know, the better Colin plays, the easier my shots are going to be, and the better I play, the easier shot um, John has are going to be. So, um, yeah, no, it's just being honest and, and trying to look forward and not trying to dwell too much on the past. So who has been the toughest opponent you've played in The funny thing is about that is like, I think all of us, we've, we've all curled together for a handful of years. We've all curled on other teams. And curling is one of those games where, like they kind of say in, in like mixed martial arts styles make fights. For some reason, curling is one of those games where all of us probably have a different answer. Like there's teams that I run into that I just can't beat. And there's teams that seem like I shouldn't be able to beat consistently that I have really good records against. Um, like these guys for a long time, a good example is John had an amazing record against, against Nicholas Sabine, who's one of the best players on the planet, one of the best teams on the planet. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe had trouble with like Corey or, or Dunham or at, at the national championships. Don't get me wrong, those are very good teams, but it just, it doesn't, like the rankings don't matter. It's, it's weird. Curling's a weird game like that. Like for some reason you run into people that you just struggle with. You know, I think it'd be easy to say like winning gold or something at the Olympics, but um, I think there, there's a lot of them, to be honest. Like every time that we come to a national championship or a world championship in our Olympics and everybody on our team is like playing well and, and moving in the same direction. I think that consistency for me along the way is is probably what I'm, you know, most proud of. It's easy to come out and not have a great week and, you know, miss the playoffs somewhere or, you know, not win. And I feel like the consistency that this team has had has really been something that I've wanted to experience. Patience is part of it. Like getting in this game, getting from zero to 95% takes half as long as getting from 95 to 99. So like there's times where you're not going to feel like you're improving and then all of a sudden it clicks. Yeah. I don't know if you have anything. Yeah. Else. And just like fall in love with practicing. Like practicing is one of those things that's not always the most fun thing that you want to do when you wake up. but fall in love with practicing and when you go practice practice with a purpose have something that you want to work on and and just when you think you have it just keep going
now, besides uh, curling, what do you like to do for fun or to relax? For me, it's chasing my kids around playing sports, whether it be you know, at curling rinks, basketball courts, swimming pools. Um, yeah, it's, it's for me, it's spending time with family. And, and the other thing that I do to kind of help myself center is uh, to hit the water and get out fishing. It's kind of what I do. Yeah, I like being with my lady out in the woods with our dogs or fishing or, yeah. I, I like board games a lot. <laughs> for some reason, I, I nerd out on board games. Yeah. Honestly, for me, it's like when you watch competitive curling, kind of take notes on it, go to school on us a little bit. Curling is one of the only sports where you get this much access, even if you're just watching through a TV. Like you don't get to hear the quarterback of the best football team talk to all of their their entire team you, you get to see the huddle but you don't get to hear it like you get to hear a curling game so really like pay attention to what we do and other good teams do and and implement and try to implement. yeah and i think what chris said earlier is never underestimate the importance of practice no doubt. i mean that's that's one thing you know i didn't play in a junior national championship until i was in college and i was practicing that entire time when i took up curling as a full-time sport like ninth grade in the winter time and um, practice and play in league games and you know sub like make yourself available hang out at the curling club and, and sub in games and I mean just re constant repetition and that growth of watching us play and watching teams play and watching curling games um, I think are almost outweigh honestly like playing at a national championship for sure. yeah. now what was it like to go to the Olympics for the first time <laughs> You have to ask me. That's a long time ago for me, man. Uh, no, it's it's always a huge honor to represent your country, and uh, I'll I'll never forget the walking into opening ceremonies and feeling like you floated around the entire thing, and um, it was just a euphoria that uh, only something like that can bring. I imagine it's probably the same thing that guys get when they're playing in, you know, championships, whether it be World Series, Super Bowl, Stanley Cup, that kind of thing. It is worth it. I would say. <laughs> Uh, I don't really want to tell you that, no. Ah. They, you know, I do try to bring them with me as much as I can, so I have them someplace in my house that they're accessible, that I can bring them, I ought to share them with the world. So, I, uh, yeah, because I really do like sharing my Olympic medals with uh, with people who maybe had never seen one before, touched one before, wore one before. We don't, yeah. me and Chris don't have one yet. Yeah. yeah. Still working on it. That's right. Now, what is it like going five times? And um, what, are you, what do you do to keep pushing? Um, it, it really just comes from a love for competing and a love for trying to grow in the sport and a love for playing with the guys you play with. And so for me, it's I've always thought I would know when, when all those things didn't align and, and they've kept aligning. And I still, I still think that going in onto a practice sheet in the middle of the day by myself is still one of my favorite places. And um, and then being out on, you know, this ice that's our national ice makers make so well with the guys I love playing curling with um, still makes me extremely like happy. So I think that's what it's take, taken to have that one. I will retire from curling. I'm sure I'm not beating that record because how old was that's a uh, Scott Baird? Yeah. He's in his fifties, right? Yeah, he's like fifty-five. No, nope. I'll be, I'll be out. I don't make it either. <laughs> I'll still curl, like yeah. for fun, but not at what it takes. I'll watch curling from a beach. That's so you got I'm kids doing. like you guys coming up and putting in all this work, man. That just shows me that. All right, I did that. Our clock is ticking, and I can't keep up with you, young go hard anymore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we coordinated. We happened to be the same shoe size. And so, you know, we wanted to be a little different. Matt is Matt is kind of the guy as far as fancy shoes. So we wanted to push him a little bit, you know. So we switched him up, have different colors. John actually happens to be the same size too. So we might get three different pairs of different colors. <laughs> really confused people. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Was, I, it was, you were there. It was it was fun for the first one. I got to be the comic relief for the first episode. <laughs> yeah, that no, was fun. I mean, the crew that did it with us was super great. So they made it they made you feel very comfortable. Um, the only time where it was a little uncomfortable was that the Olympic trials when they had an extra set of cameras out there because I think that was maybe a little extra motivation for other teams. And, um, but yeah, no, it uh, it was fun. Yeah, it's it was fun to have somebody really take that much care in putting together a story um, and ask such like good questions and follow us around and make it into something that felt like it was going to be us and not something that was kind of made for Hollywood. How did that come about? Did you guys? No idea. <laughs> I think uh, I think so. Before the Olympics, NBC and Peacock uh, looked for certain things to help, you know, drive excitement for the Olympics. And through our one of our agents got contacted saying, that, you know, hey, you know, Team Schuster is trying to get back to the Olympics, and that might be an interesting story. And so we started talking to to NBC and their producers, and and they came up. We didn't know it was going to be a two, three, four part series, but it ended up, um, yeah, Scott Boggins, the executive producer and director, and his crew did an incredible job. It, it was a really, it's a really fun piece to have. Like two kids from California be successful in curling, or do my parents have to move me to Wisconsin? <laughs> I'd say like 20 years Minnesota. Ago. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Two kids um, be, from California be successful in curling, or do my parents have to move to me to Minnesota? Uh, so, okay, so I, I was gonna say 20 years ago, it was tough. Like, first of all, I don't think there were any curling clubs in California. Now it's expanding so much. The beautiful thing about what's happened in the last 20 years in curling in our country is you can you can be from anywhere. Like, there are curling clubs all over the place, and if there's not one now, There'll be one an hour from you, somewhere within an hour of your house in the next year or two. Like, it's wild. My wife and I are thinking about going to Vegas next winter because they're popping up a full-time curling club. Like, that is something that never would have been possible when I was growing up. So, it's, it's an exciting time. Like, you guys have a real shot, for sure. I, I think I need to ask you a question. What do you want that answer to be? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you like Minnesota? How do you like the winter? No, I. <laughs> if you look out here at our national championships and our top players in our in our country, they are now coming from everywhere in our country. So I think you guys got a shot if you end up staying in California, which I don't think it was. It would have been way tougher, like Colin said, 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I we sometimes we play on arena ice. Yeah. And it's it's hard to get. Uh, some uh, most clubs are like 30 minutes away from us. So, yeah. what thing you know building a curling club in our basement? How is that a good How idea? How big is your basement? <laughs> like a one, like one sheet. Uh, that would be amazing. Would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Tell me when I can come over. That sounds fun. Yeah. No kidding. Um, I think I was paying attention and trying to grow and trying to learn. I mean, I'm still out as things are happening be like, all right, put that one in the bank kind of thing for, you know, I would do this the same. I do this different. Um, yeah, you have to also like be fine with having the end of every end in your hands as well. So, um, which, you know, I, I enjoy that part as well. I think, you know, Managing what's coming at you and what's happening is, is the most important part to being a good skip. I think, you know, seeing the scoreboard, seeing the situation, um, making making decisions, be decisive. I mean, those are all like things that I work very hard to try to do for my teammates, but also um, listen to your teammates when maybe they have questions or maybe see something differently. So, I mean, there's so much to it. I could probably have, I could probably answer you that in a one hour long answer, but I think that's pretty much the nuts and bolts. Like we kind of talked about earlier, just being consistent. So then instead of thinking, this is the biggest shot of the biggest game of my life, it's, I just go through my routine. We say these words to each other. I get in the hack, I clean the rock, I spin it once, I point at the broom, breathe in, exhale, throw. Like it's, 
you're thinking about that process instead of the moment. And one thing that's crazy is like, people ask us all the time, you know, how do you deal with crowd noise? You don't hear it. Like it's, it's gone. The only, the only time you notice it is when you can't hear like the skip yelling at you or telling you what to say, but you don't notice it when you're throwing it. It's not a distraction because you're just locked in. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's really, for me, it's just constantly like seeing if somebody's doing something that's working, trying to see why. Um, but for me, it's, I'm just taking it as it goes, feeling it out, like talking to, you know, Chris and I talk a lot about, about curling, like away from games, that kind of stuff too. And it's, it's really just trying to stay on top of, of what's happening out here. If somebody has been doing something that's working, like maybe give it a try kind of thing. about curling is you want to play your game so there is some level of like maybe there's a, a thing you can pick out for the team like maybe there if you're if you're one up coming into the eighth end of a 10 end game and you don't have hammer like maybe they press really they give up a lot of steals or something in that end so you kind of can pick out little things but you're really just trying to play your game mostly is what i would say yeah the last question, what do you, what is it about curling that you guys love so much? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, just like a competitive person. So something that you get to compete at a high level. Uh, and I really love traveling um, and experiencing new cultures and foods and everything else. And so that's, this has been an avenue that I can like have that competitiveness and also get to do that as well. Yeah, I'd say like, I'm almost 40, I turned 40 in May, and there is nothing else in my life that I get to measure myself against the best of the world at. And that is a rare thing. It feels like a privilege to have that opportunity. And that's what keeps you coming back. Like that's when I'm done, the thing I will miss the most will be that, like that opportunity. So yeah. And for me, I think it's kind of what these guys are saying is like being able to play against the best in the world. But at the same point, I love the recreational side of curling it's equally as much. I play in league two nights a week. I play one night with my wife and our some friends of ours and another you know, day with some buddies and, and go sit around and, and connect with people. And I feel like the number of curling friends I have in the world is so massive. And, um, and so that part of the game also for me is something that I just truly like appreciate them. Thank you so much for awesome. taking the time to do this. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, 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 we're oh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Peace, man. Thank you.